Hi, my name's Sherry. Welcome back into my stamp studio. I have a really fun card for you today. It was supposed to be my Monday card, but my Monday got away from me. I know that never happens to the rest of you. Um, so my Monday card became a Tuesday card and then I just had to whip something out of thin air. And I was, it's really beautiful and I'll show you in a second, but I was hoping that it would be a card it was in my head that I could whip out of thin air for our event on Friday. And I wanted to remind you about that because it's quickly approaching. When we first put it on the calendar, you know, it was still weeks away and we were all locked in the house and things are starting to open back up and I can't believe it's already here. But this Friday, um, me and five of my other fabulous demonstrator friends will be hosting an online sneak peek into what have been our favorite things. Everybody's been making all kinds of beautiful things. I've seen some of the stuff they've been working on. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So you're going to want to see it. It starts at, at one Eastern time and will end about eight. Each of us takes about an hour and then it's a private Facebook page. And while we're not live, um, each of us has an hour where we can be live. Some of us take the whole time, some of us don't. But then we also throw some other stuff, other cards that we've been working on. So people who don't follow me will get to see some of the stuff that you guys have already seen. And then my friends that you don't have not seen any of their stuff, you'll get to see some of the stuff they've worked on. We'll have prizes and we'll have some upcoming specials, um, some special still on some retired stuff. So the way that you get into that is that you make a purchase from one of us. It's our thank you gift for this month. So just go to my website, make a purchase, and then you'll get an invite. I'll probably start sending the invites out to the page. We did get the page up yesterday, so I'll probably send the invites out tomorrow. Um, there's nothing on the page, so you're not missing anything. Like literally, there's nothing on the Facebook page. Um, but the, I do have the catalogs. Today is Tuesday. This video will go up on Tuesday. Um, and I will be going to the post office today. My next time to the post office to mail more catalogs will be Thursday. And then I may have to order some more. I do want to tell you that I'm out of the last chance card class, which was one of my free gifts for this month. And then I offered the champagne rhinestones. I'm now out of those. Um, so I'm just as my third thank you gift, you get the Facebook event, the catalog, and then it had been the card class. And then it was the champagne rhinestones. Now it's just an opened package packages of embellishments, whatever I have, because I don't want to hold up, um, obviously I don't want to hold up catalogs to any of you all. Um, so I'm just giving whatever embellishment packets that are in that champagne rhinestone price range the same. So you may get something different and I apologize, but I don't, the champagne rhinestones are on back order and I'm not going to um, be sending those out whenever they finally come back in. I had several of them, so I thought that maybe I had enough to get through, but I don't. Um, so any, any free gift, free stamping gift I know is fun to get. So just be surprised, it'll be like Christmas. So here's the card that was my Monday card. I didn't want you to miss it because I very rarely post an evening video and this was evening, it was, I don't know, it was after nine o'clock at night, I think by the time it got up, but it was super simple. It has kind of a Christmas feel afterwards, I thought. So it, when Christmas comes around, if you need a quick card, you could grab these gold foil elements and get them. If you look closely, it's not Christmas, but there are pieces on it that could be more pine or um, Christmas. Or if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, it would be a nice Christmas card. But it's several elements from the Forever Greenery. The stamp set's called Forever Fern. It's got the new little mini folders that I used on a couple of places, the cord, and then the the lovely foil. So you wanna watch that video. The whole card just took a few minutes to put together. It looks like it took forever. So then today I'm going back to the Blossoms in Bloom and I'm gonna show you, cause I know a lot of you are afraid to use your Stamparatus simply because you don't know how to set it up. So I'm gonna do another card with Blossoms in Bloom and I'm gonna show you how start to finish because sometimes when I do a video with my Stamparatus, I've already got it set up. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up to use it with the stamp set so you're able to use it and put all of your stamps together with it. Because for this one, it does help a little bit if you wanna get the colors on there. I know on this one, I only use a Stamparatus so I can get more colors. Today I'm gonna use a Stamparatus so we can get those second flowers lined up. So this one I already have, here's the Blossoms in Bloom, and I'm not really showing it to you because I've already stuck my second stamps on it. Um, so here's my Stamparatus. And then I only ever use one magnet. Some, sometimes I don't use any magnets. 
I have the piece in here. Well, actually, I guess I've got a lot of pieces in here. Um, this is a piece that you can buy if you use a lot of the photopolymer sets. It's just an extra little bit of foam and it raises everything up. I highly recommend it if you find that you're using a lot of photopolymer stamps. It's inexpensive. You can also write on it with a stamp and write marker and then you don't need these. But because we may do this card at camp, we'll probably use this. So then I just put this up here to hold my paper in place, especially for this card because it's gonna take a pretty big piece of cardstock. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a feel for where you want your card to be. So what I do is I take, it's going to be Highland Heather, and ink spots work really, really well for this. We have a class coming up in, it's an online class, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a zoo safari of the new catalog, but all of the stamps are zoo-themed, animal-themed. And if you're on my email list, you're going to get some information about that, either in today's email or the next email. But you'll get a bunch of ink spots. And ink spots are really nice to use for this. So I'm just going to kind of lightly ink this up. It doesn't have to be perfect because for this one, and always just make sure that your paper is flush up in here. But this is just to kind of give me an outline of where my stamp is. Because so you just, for the first stamp, you just kind of smuck it on there if you don't need it lined up or anything. And then I just either hold my take my pick tool or my scissors to hold this down. So now we see where this is because I'm just gonna use this for one, for me. I just kind of lay this. Now for this one, I also wanna make sure that my die is gonna fit. And if you watch my videos, you know the first time I get dies, I just run them all through my die machine and then I keep them in my case. So I kind of know what they do and how big they are. And for this one, it's important because the die is bigger than the stamps. So I'm gonna lay that on there. And then I want to make sure that my die is going to be on my stamp. Because you can see it's going to overhang my, which is fine. It can overhang because this is smaller than it needs to be. But now I can see that this is about where I want my paper to be. So then I just grab a pencil because there's no way to hold this on here except to move my pencil. Or maybe my daughter did. She came and filmed yesterday and I had my stuff laying here. So then just kind of mark the corners off, which is also nicely nice if you're gonna make more than one or if you're setting up your um, stamp apparatus for a class or a group event, or if you do shoebox swaps with your friends. So just mark the four corners, just like that. And then that way you can move everything out of the way. And then I'm going to take a small piece of adhesive and you just need ever so tiny of a piece and it's not so important on the, the cards that have the red rubber, but the photopolymer can be kind of sticky. And then you're just gonna place this right back in your little four corners, just like that, and hold that there. And now we're gonna go back and ink this up. And again, this is Highland Heather. And you can see when you use the larging pads, it gets on your plate a little bit, but it's no biggie. You can just, if you're using photopolymer, just take, pop the plate off when you're done and take it to the sink and just rinse the whole thing off. And it's all the way clean. My cat is going crazy. She's wanted me to play with her all day. So we're gonna get this inked up on here. And then again, I'm gonna just take my scissors just so it doesn't lift up. You can use two magnets, but the two magnets, you know, if they touch each other, they can break. So I just hold it on myself. And if it's flush to the corner and everything moves, you can just put it back. Put that inked up nicely. This place right here could have a tiny bit more ink. That's because I didn't press hard. Just ink that up a little bit more in the middle. And this time I'll make sure I press right there. And then we're good to go. So now we've got that. So now I'm gonna pop this plate off. And now what we need to do is I wanna put these flower leaves and leaves on that come to with the set. So I'm gonna lay this on. You can see how it fits nicely over the top of our design. 
I'm going to take a second plate and you can write on these, which I do for my classes. And funny story, the thing that takes the Sharpie off of these is hand sanitizer, which I always have in abundance in my office. And I don't like to use it in real life because it dries up my hands until there's a pandemic and hand sanitizer can't be found anywhere except for the gallon that you have in your office for the last couple of years because that's what you use to clean your blocks and your stamparatus things. So my hand sanitizer is currently down in the real world in our kitchen where we can fill up all of our little things. So um, my blocks and my stamparatus things are not getting cleaned. So it does say petal pink, but that's from another project because I'm too lazy to go downstairs to get a little squirt of sanitizer, but that's what cleans that up. So, you know, once you can find hand sanitizer again, that's what you can use it for. So now we want to make sure that these are gonna go where we want them to go. So what you're gonna do is figure out which flower, is this this one? Yep, so just lay that right on top of your die, kind of hold it in place. So that means this flower is this one. And they're just like a little puzzle piece. But the nice thing is, is once you have this set up, you only have to do it once. Now the weird thing with this stamp set, and I was a tad bit disappointed, is I thought there would be two leaves because you can see this leaf is perfect for this one. So I just naturally assumed that this other leaf that came with it was for this here, but it's not. I don't even really know what this goes with. It doesn't match anything in here. So we're just gonna make it work with this one. It doesn't quite fill the whole thing in, but that's okay. It's art. So now you have everything where it needs to be. Just take your plate and then grab those. And again, you just wanna kinda of hold it cause you don't want your white piece to move cause now you've literally just lined up where you want them to stamp onto your white piece. probably going to pull your little piece up, but that's okay. Cause this is just a scrap. This is the thing I just ran through when I first got it and it will stay in there. I just pop that back in my case and it's just a template that I can always keep in there and then kind of press those on and make sure they stayed. Now I'm going to get a gorgeous grape. Actually, I'm going to go with my um, soft sea foam first. Start with my lighter color first and ink my leaves. And now I'm gonna get my gorgeous grape. And you can see it's getting on my plate because it's a big so if you have the ink spots, then you just ink those and it's a little bit nicer, but you know, you work with what you got. And then just stamp those, make sure you get all four of them. And then hold on to it just in case you want a second coating of the ink. I did do my grape in double, maybe if I can get it under there. that's dark enough. I think my other one was fine. I didn't really need to do it on my original card. I did it twice, but then look, when you lay this on here, now those are all exactly where they need to be matched up perfectly. Um, then you can take your chamois if you don't want to go to the sink, like if you're going to use this at a project or you're going to keep working on it, cause it's kind of messy. Just pop your chamois open and just wipe that off. You don't want to use, I know a lot of people are um, fans of like baby wipes. I am not. One, because I think they smell like you are cleaning, changing a diaper, and I've never been a fan of that. Um, but if you use anything that has the fibers on the photopolymer, you might, you'll probably find that like you'll have the string sticking to them. And that's not any kind of fun either. So now we are going to take Um, this is crushed curry and then it has this little flower center. And I have found just from experience that to have it show through on these big flowers, just stamp it twice. And then on this little flower, stamp it once. Okay, 
because it shows through more of the holes if you stamp it twice when you lay that thing on the top of it. But for the little one, except I, that one didn't stamp all the way because I didn't get any ink because of fill that in. And then we're gonna need the template again because it does come with these tiny little leaves here. And I could have gone to the time to put them on the Stamparatus, but you really don't need to because you can do this. I'm gonna take this plate off. Because they're so tiny, it's really easy to just make sure that this is all lined up where you want it to be. And then just take the, the tiny leaves and kind of flip this up. Because remember, it's just a template. And you just want some color back there and then that puts the color there. So we've got those two there and then we've got two over here. And do this before you have your reel. Um, die because you don't want to be folding that one back. It's one of the other big advantages to having these that you keep in your stamp case. So when you get your dies and you run them through, not only do you know what they do, but then you have these that you're like, oh, I don't want to waste a piece of scrap paper because it's not a piece of scrap paper. It's actually a, a tool that you can use. So pull this off of here. And then we're gonna take our little mini cutter or whatever cutter you have. So we wanna get right up close to this. So get as close to your design as you can without chopping off any of the color. If a little bit of it goes, then that's okay because the dye is gonna go. But I don't like, I didn't wanna have it as close as it could be because then it's you have to get it too perfect in the Stamparatus. It's easier to trim after. And you can do this on any of your paper cutters. You could even do it with scissors if you want because it doesn't have to be totally straight. So now we've got it all the way up. You can see it took a tiny bit off of those, but when you lay the template on or the die on it later, it's not gonna matter. Okay, now so now we need to cut our real die. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to set that up for those of you that are a little bit afraid. I know sometimes I can't because I've already set it up. It doesn't really teach them how to, to use your stamp apparatus, and it's not hard. So first we're gonna take the die, where did I put it? So just take your die and here's some tips and tricks to getting it to work. You want it in the center of, if you have this one, because the center of this machine is the highest if you have the precision plate. So put it right in the middle. Make sure all of it's on there. So this is, this piece of paper is cut a quarter sheet of cardstock. It's not a quarter inch smaller, like it would be on the front of a card. And I found just rolling it once through worked well for me, but everybody's machine's different. So the first time you do it on your scrap that you run through, you might do it once to see if that worked. And then when you're doing your card, if you're not sure, then you can always roll it back. I'm not a fan of rolling back because it puts more cuts in your plate. But if you feel like you need to, then do it. But you can see that it takes almost everything out. And then we're just gonna take our roller it does make a mess. So I'm going to roll it over the top of here. And anytime you work with these intricate dies, it's better to roll while they're in the die because it doesn't bend the paper. So let's roll all these center bits out while they're they have the stability of the die and you're not poking the paper. So just roll those right over. And then let's pull it out. Have ink on my hands. Because this is a really, really um, thin paper die. So you can see we got most of the, the pieces out. The ones that are in it, you can just kind of poke out with your hands. But if you roll that, roll the sponge over it now or that little, um, I don't know what that thing's called the little car wash thing. 
then it might tear your design. But now it's poked them all out. The ones that are, might just be stuck, you just have to pull. So there you go, see how pretty it is? And that's super easy. I mean, they're all out, they just are st stuck. I could have rolled a second longer, but there you go. Now I'm gonna take the textile folder. Okay, this is from um, the Touch of Texture. And so you're just gonna put your thing in here. It's gonna get, make it look a little bit more like a painting. It's gonna be real pretty. And I think you need the blue plate. Just roll that through. how pretty this one is. It just really gives it a nice like watercolor paper kind of feel to it. Then our one last step before we mount this all together. Well, I guess there's a couple of last steps. This is just a piece of scrap paper that I had because you know, when you're kind of testing what you want to do, I'm going to color this with blends and I'm going to show you how I did it, and then I'm going to um, fast forward this portion of the video. Here's the colors. I just got the same colors that I had ink pads, except for the yellows because we don't have crushed curry. So I have um, daffodil and mango. So just take the brush tip and literally just color this. So it only takes a second, but you don't want to watch me do the whole thing. So I just did the big flowers in the mango and you're literally just brushing the color on and then I did the small ones in this. So I'll be back after I color this. Okay, so I have one flower left and for these larger flowers, I'm using Purple Posy. We don't have that in an ink pad. So I wasn't able to do that for my um, ink colors, but it's a nice contrast and it matches nicely. So it will offset these large flowers. So it doesn't take long to do these. And you can go back if you want and add, make them a little bit darker, but I think they're pretty like that. If you want another simple idea for a card, you can take one of these, look how pretty this is. You don't have to put it on this. You can just make one of these like that. So second card idea for you. I might do one of those for my live on the event on Friday and just do this, because super pretty. So we've got this. Now you're just gonna match it up here. But before you do that, it's kind of fun to give this a little bit more texture. So old school, let's go back to Stampin' Up! 1990s. Take your scissors and just rough up the edges. So this is real old school when you use your scissors because maybe like Stampin' Up! 2000, we came out with a little tool that was on a little ring and it had a little blade that you could do this with but you know, your scissors work just fine. But it gives just that little bit more texture. Cause I'm not, mm, and it's, I started to say I'm not a fan. It's not that I'm not a fan, but when you layer, layer a card and then a card or a, like a color and a color and a color to me, that looks like Stampin' Up 1990. So I always try to do something. So there's just not a bunch of layered cards of color. And because this design is so big, it doesn't give you a lot of options for anything but just layering some cards. And then because this folder's already ruffled the paper up for you a little bit, you can kind of give it some old vintage feel. Like maybe this was a print that was left in a in your grandma's attic. That's kind of how it looks. So now we've got a little bit of a feel and that's gonna help raise this up. So let's mount the rest of the card together before we glue that on top. So I've got the soft sea foam and then I've got the gorgeous gray. It's a really pretty spring color combination. we be nice for weddings or Mother's Day if for next year or birthdays, showers. So let's get this on here. I'm having a hard time being straight. <laughs> oh, but you know this one, it doesn't matter so much because we can offset the thing. 
And so now I'm going to put this. Oh, come on. There. I'm going to move it a little closer to me so I can get it where I want it to be. So you need this piece here to be a little bit smaller because this is bigger. So now I'm going to take, um, I know some of you are not fans of this, but it's the easiest thing to hold this. Take your squidgy tip of the liquid glue and just flip it over to these um, yellow centers and just ever so slightly like drag it across because it, do, it doesn't fill in the holes and you, you know this stuff's super sticky. So if you just get it on these center holes, it's also going to let the leaves have some body and life of their own because they'll be able to lift up but the whole card will be stuck together. it the right direction yes I was a little bit afraid so kind of match your little two purple flowers up and the other nice thing is with the green glue is you have time to move it if you try it with that fuse that I just used once it's down there's no way you're pulling this delicate thing back up because it's stuck you see I couldn't even move that big piece and you've got this delicate little design and it's not going anywhere but this you can move around until you have all of these just where you want them. That one didn't get any glue under it. Has a, the one I started on has a little bit much glue. So look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to take just a piece of the scrap paper here. And then this set has lovely greetings. Love the font. I'm going to take the happy birthday. And I'm going to do it in the gorgeous grape. I have my bird feet from my card the other day because I used the happy birthday. My bird feet and my bird. I need to clean up. You can see if you watched my video on Monday when I said I did not have time to make this card when it got late on Monday night. That's why. So I'm going to trim this out. Just trim it real close. If you have your little cutter there and you want to try to cut it, knock yourself out. It's easier, I think, to just use your scissors and just make those little labels. And I'm going to take my purple posy. Again, use your brush tip. And you just want to go fast because you don't want this to smear. A tiny bit of that glue on my hands from when I moved it. And you know, once you get that green glue on you, everything in the world sticks. And then just kind of decide where you want to put it. I think we'll go over here. And there you go. Perfect placement. You could go back and make another card um, with your plates just the way they are. You wouldn't have to take the time to set all that up. In fact, if I was going to make multiples of these, they would make a great gift um, to give, like a little gift set of flowers. And I would just go ahead, if I was giving them, and include the sayings because you see this one had to get well soon, but you could just do a bunch of these little labels and then maybe stick some dimensional backs on them as a little gift set to um, a friend or your mom or your grandma. And then they could add the different greetings that they wanted. I still have a little bit of wet glue there. That way they'd have the flower sets ready, but they'd have all of the occasions that they want and they could just pop a greeting on when they need it. So, and then this one was done just with the black cardstock if you didn't see that video. So you don't have to color those. It was just another another way to use the set that I wanted to show you. But there you go. That's how you set it up with your Stamparatus. This one also has the old world paper. So this one has the texture. So two different backgrounds. Both of them work well. This one I did not do the flowers through because the old world paper would be, I think, a bit much on those flowers. I think it would wrinkle them so much they wouldn't fit back under the, temp the dye. So that's what I have for you today. I had a goal of two weeks of videos when I got the new catalog stuff. So I have two more left to show you. And then that takes me to Friday, which will be my live. And then I'm taking Memorial Day weekend off. So there won't be any videos from Saturday to Monday. And then um, 
I'll be back on my three weeks of video schedule the Tuesday following Memorial Day. And then on June 3rd, when the catalog kicks off, I always have a fun catalog kickoff day. So I'll be on Facebook Live. I'm gonna cross my fingers, try to do a YouTube Live that day as well. I've never done one yet because they say you need a moderator to look at your comments and I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I can possibly um, figure out YouTube Live because I would like to do that. Um, but definitely on June 3rd, I will be doing a catalog kickoff something for you. So everybody have a great Tuesday. Bye.